Welcome to Grade 4 Science. I am Kisa Richards, and together we will learn a lot more about science. If you like science like me, you will surely have fun. If you do not like science that much, I can tell you if you put your mind to it, you will enjoy it or even love it. So, tell your friends. We are going to do science. You know why? Science is fun. Science is awesome. Science is cool. And best of all, science is all around us. Get your pencils, get your books, take notes, be involved. Because we will learn a lot more about our body, earth and space, materials, energy, forces and so much so much more all right are you ready let's have fun your topic today is based on properties and changes in matter but our focus will be on permanent changes and temporary changes in matter or materials all right permanent changes and temporary changes are you ready let's go by the end of this session you should be able to identify permanent changes and temporary changes in materials also, you should be able to differentiate or tell the difference between a temporary change and a permanent change. Is that okay? Yes. You will be able to do that. And so, we can do that through investigations. And there are lots of, lots of investigations to be done today. But before we start investigating, we have to get certain terms, terms right. For example, properties. What do you understand by the term properties? You would have done so in grade 3. A property is a characteristic that can be observed using the five senses or be measured using a tool like a ruler or a balance. And some of those properties are color, texture, size, volume, and so on. Good? What do we mean by change? Because we're going to look at permanent change and temporary change. All right? So what do you understand by the term change? good thinking so a change is to make different or to become different let me go that again to make or become different something will change or it will become different as a result of some action good so properties right properties and more so I was actually talking about physical properties, but we will more deal with the physical properties. Characteristics that can be observed or measured and change means to become different. All right, good. Let's move on. Here's a question for you. Can all changes that occur in matter be reversed? Can all changes be reversed? Reverse means 
to go back to or to change to original form or state? God, the only way we can answer that question is if we investigate, we will be able to find out. So let's find out. So we have our materials prepared. And so the first we're going to look at is this paper. Good. Can we identify the properties of this paper? It's blue. flat, smooth, or we can say thin, thin or flat. Good. How can we change this paper? Or what are some ways by which we could change this paper? Good. I was thinking of that too. We can crumble this paper, we can fold this paper, we can wet this paper, we can maybe tear it into pieces. Good. But I choose to fold this paper anywhere. I fold it this way. Good. And again, this way. Good. So, what do you think about this? Has the paper been changed in any way? How? Good. As a result of folding it, it became smaller. Good. The shape has changed. Anything else? So the size, the shape, but is the color the same? Yes, it's still blue. Right? It still feels smooth. Good. It's still flat or thin. Well, just a bit more thick, but not. Right? Good. So this paper has been changed. Can we reverse this change? How? Good. We can unfold this paper. And so we would have reversed this change. So we get back this paper in its original shape and size. Good. So the properties are just like the ones before we fold the paper. Good? All right, so we would have reversed the changes made in this paper. Good? All right, we will continue with this paper. Now, how else can I change this paper? Guess what? I'm thinking of, and I'm going to do it. Here is my pan for safety. I'm going to burn this paper. Observe carefully. Are you observing any changes? It's 
so as it's being burned we're seeing a change in color anything else a change in size a change in texture so it's now powdery white or yes grayish with some amount of black good so we would have changed this paper by burning it good the next question is can we reverse this change why good we have something different the size has changed the color the texture and then you notice as it was being burned we saw gas coming out of it is not so so that's a new substance being formed there and went into the atmosphere leaving behind ashes good so burning this paper or changing the paper by burning it would have caused a change that would be difficult very difficult or impossible to change to its original form so we would have seen that this paper would have gone through two changes one that it could have been reversed and the other we can't reverse it good so as what kind of change do you think it was when the paper was folded and then we reversed it was it a temporary change or a permanent change good that was a temporary change for a short time we can reverse it we can get back the original form or state good on the other hand this change when the paper was burnt we couldn't reverse it and therefore it is a permanent change cannot be reversed irreversible or non-reversible good so we would have established temporary change in matter where it can be reversed nothing new has formed and a permanent change it is reverse irreversible where a new substance is formed good are you having fun me too all right so let's do some more investigations and so i have here some water in a beaker at home you want to try it again you can use a transparent sanitary cup or any transparent container like the drinking glass i have about one teaspoon of salt here i have a spoon to do some stirring good so here is the water what are the physical properties of this water are we are we sure this is water could be something else so be careful not everything that looks like water is water good but the physical properties would be it's a liquid it's colorless it's transparent good what about the salt 
it's a solid it is white and made up of crystals good so what do you think will happen when I add the salt to the water and stir or agitate it good you would have known that from your experiences or reading about it or seeing it on the learning channel good so the salt will dissolve or did I hear melt no dissolve melting is when a solid is changed to a liquid right so let us let us see if this salt will really dissolve when we add it to this water and we stir good wow this is a case of a disappearing salt good I'm no longer seeing salt but I'm seeing just what I started with in the beaker water transparent colorless still a liquid good so it appears that the water didn't change but something changed what changed yes the salt changed good the salt is no longer here so we're not seeing any white part crystals or solid crystals floating around the water would have dissolved the salt and so the salt particles are now swimming around in there with the water molecules good so we have formed a mixture here called a solution where the salt has dissolved in the water good all right so we saw that the salt would have changed what type of change do you think this is is it temporary or permanent can we get back the salt can we reverse this whole process and get back the salt yes but how good if we heat the salt solution the water will evaporate good and we can get back there the salt and in some cases if we really want to we can put it in a special apparatus called the distillation apparatus and we could get back the water as well good so let's prove that we can really get back this salt so here i have a micro burner from the microscience kit so the microscience kit can be used for this activity as well in your school so i'm going to light this burner as small as it is it is powerful in providing us with the heat energy we need good and I would have put some salt solution in this test tube taken from the microscience kit. And here I have the test tube holder. And I'm going to heat this. The water is turning into vapor or gas coming out and coming out of the test tube. Good. And if we know, do you see that this? It is now getting more and more white at the bottom of this test tube here, indicating to us that something is coming out 
or recrystallizing. And what do you think that is? See at the at the 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 corners of the test tube. Good. Those cracking songs. All right. And there we have our salt. Isn't science fun? Good. Microborno. All right. And you see how quickly we were able to do that. So here we have our salt being recrystallized in this test tube from the salt solution formed when the salt dissolved in the water. So we were able to reverse the change and therefore mixing salt with water is a temporary change. Good. We have more to do and I bet you will love this. We'll try for for our first day. We'll do two of the same kind but a little different. So here I have a Ziploc bag. Here I have a glove. And in this glove, I would have already put some baking soda. Good? About um, three teaspoons. And I'm going to add about twenty five ML of vinegar. Good. So baking soda or like the, uh, the baking powder and I'm going to add vinegar. Good. All right, and I'm going to quickly tie this glove up. You can use a balloon too, you know. See what is happening there? All right. The same way, I'll add about three teaspoons of baking soda into this Ziploc bag. And then I'm going to add about the same amount twenty five ml of baking soda, and I'm going to seal this back quickly. Good, wow, what is going on there? You can more see in this one here. I'm seeing lots of bubbles, and in this case. The glove is being inflated. Wow. Look at this. And you can hear lots of fizzing. Which is an indication that a reaction is taking place. And the bubbles, or the fizzing in fact, telling us that a gas is being produced. As you see here. And this gas is filling up the bag and it is inflating the glove good and if I I'm to open this I will find that what do you think will happen and guess what it's a bit cool Another time we'll talk about that. Good. It's a special type of reaction. Good. This gas is produced. We're still hearing the fizzing. All right. So, see, here in this bag, 
in fact the gas so this mixture here is white and remember the baking soda which I forgot to show you anyhow you know what it looks like baking soda is a white powder and we would have added a transparent liquid called um, colorless transparent liquid vinegar and so we have now a white mixture and a gas this gas is carbon dioxide good carbon dioxide all right so as you would have heard there a new substance is being formed right later on you'll know that there's more than one new substance being formed here but the one that is evident to you is the the gas and that gas is called carbon dioxide so we have a new substance being formed therefore can we reverse this change no and therefore it is a permanent change it's feeling cold all right it's an endothermic reaction let's recap what we would have done today we would have looked at temporary change and permanent change and we say that a temporary change right like you're seeing on the table there is a change that can be reversed when materials undergo that change we can reverse it and we can get back the original state or form of that material on the other hand we have permanent change which cannot be reversed or we say irreversible right and in this case a new substance is being formed a new substance or sub new substances being formed right other examples of temporary change would be melting ice boiling water tearing the paper crushing a can chopping a wood dissolving sugar in water we can reverse all of those changes temporary while for permanent changes new substances are being formed and they're irreversible good example would be baking a cake but if the when we mix the ingredients that would be physical change but it would be a bit difficult to you know separate those components but once we heat it a new substance is formed so that's a permanent change irreversible um, frying an egg or boiling an egg good permanent change can you name others I guess so all right your task for today what is one difference between a temporary change and a permanent change in materials just one difference good one example of a temporary change and one example of a permanent change can you give that of course if you don't want to do and answer and those two questions what you can do is go take your paper and crayons and go and draw a picture to show temporary change and permanent change in matter so that's all for now remember science is fun science is cool science is awesome and best of all science is all around us
Goodbye. See you next time.